leader. Working on the door. Section. I know you're back there, Katie. I can hear you breathing. What that? <laughs> Your patient's doing fine so far. Your diagnosis was right down the middle of the plate. You're still throwing strikes, kiddo. <laughs> right angle to Biggie. Good thing you're not playing the game today, Trap. Who's pitching? Grossman for Bay General, jackpot for us, retractor. Hit me again, Ernie. <clears throat> In case you were watching, Katie, that was Shoop to McIntyre to the floor. A error goes to the surgeon. Tissue forceps, thank you. Well, you better get warmed up, guys. I'm losing my stuff. I need a relief pitcher here. Showed me the receipt and the catalog, everything. He had the face mask, the shin guards, the chest protector. It was ridiculous. Ah, the old McIntyre family grace. Like father, like son. What are you doing here? Don't you have rounds? Yeah, yeah, that's, um, um, funny you mention that. That's just what I wanted to talk to you about. I got this patient in 328 West, Jerome Staines. I scheduled a cardiac cath for him, and somebody pulled the plug on the tests. I did. Ah, you want to tell me why? A man has SBE, infection in the gums, which might be causing the infection in the heart. I've seen it before. Dead. Don't you think you could have told me first? I mean, he is my patient. And be his doctor. Clear up the infection in his mouth before you add an expense or risk a test that he might not need. Ah... You're pulling rank, then. <laughs> no, I'm not pulling rank. I'm pulling experience. You okay? Get out of here, will you? Bottom line, Kate. Well, I'm not sure. I'd like to uh, do a preliminary workup and get the next we have to. Come on, Trapper. It'll be fun poking and prodding. <laughs> Hello, Cheryl. Yes, uh, I'd like a CBC and an SMA panel and some chest x-rays as part of a workup for Dr. McIntyre. No, no, the patient is Dr. McIntyre. Besides, I can get three to one in the corridor that you don't have any blood. <laughs> oh, and uh, a spinal tattoo. Uh-huh. Yeah, today. Thank you. Ah, uh, I know a spinal tap isn't any fun, but to humor me. I don't know. You know what you're looking for? I'm not sure. It could be just a simple virus going for gold through your nervous system, or it could be, um, Guillain-Barre syndrome. What do you know about that? Not enough. You're getting weaker, huh? Oh, yeah, it's been a long day. <laughs> oh, well, it's gone down since the alarm went off. I've had two nurses scouring the hospital for you. Yeah, well, I had to give them a slip, Katie. All those needles in my exposed backside just drove them to a frenzy. Oh, yeah. Lust. Pure and simple. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. So, you decided to take refuge in the therapy room? Well, I uh, thought I ought to come down and give it a, give it a good look. Same old room, no changes. No, 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 no. Tonight, it's different. Oh, boy. You know, I used to do parallels in college. High bar. Ah. Never got any points on the pummel horse. <laughs> I 
I just think I ran out of small talk, Katie. Now, if you were my patient, I'd get right to it. Uh, don't be standing in the fear of it. Meet it head on. The lab found increased protein in the cerebrospinal fluid. No increase in cell count. Guillain Barre. Yep. Oh, yeah, well, we kind of figured that, didn't we? Yep. That, um, that virus you had was probably part of it. We don't really know that much about Guillain Barre. It's just that it. It comes out of nowhere poof, that fast, and it usually disappears, and there's really no a treatment for it. Yeah, well, so much for the cause, given the effect. The onslaught is instantaneous, as you can see. Upper deterioration of motor skills, muscle control. Yes, and you probably will uh, descend into complete loss. Quadriparetic. Yes. And we can offer supportive therapy until the disease runs its course, which will probably be two weeks or a couple of months or a couple of... Don't stop. If you develop bulbar paralysis or respiratory problems, we will have to do a tracheotomy and put you on a respirator. You'd like to know if it could uh, kill you. Well, yeah, it could. But that's very rare, because 80% completely recover, but... Yes, yes, you could die, you could live, or you could stay somewhere in between. Now, don't ask me any more questions, because I've given you all my answers. Same problem I had in college. <laughs> Lousy dismount. Dad, what is this about a spinal tap? Oh. Uh, Dr. Right. Hanley, what's going on? Fell down. For on. God's sake, uh, help me up. Uh, uh, there we go. Now we gotta die. Mom. Hmm? I've only got a dime. It oh. takes a quarter. Oh. What's it called again? Guillain Barre. Cream? No. Thanks. Why is it called it's that? It's probably named after the guys who discovered it. Do me a favor, JT. You ever discover disease, don't call it McIntyre Syndrome. I don't want our name to scare people. I called him yesterday morning. How could he be paralyzed? He didn't fall down the stairs. He wasn't in a car accident. He didn't break his neck. One day, he can't be paralyzed. He is, Mom. This Guillain Barre thing can do that to you. How? I don't understand. Oh, it's weird. It's a rare disease. It's myeloridiculoneuritis of some unknown cause. JT, don't give me definitions. I want an explanation. It's a loss of muscle control. Makes it hard to swallow, hard to breathe. A perfectly healthy man does not become paralyzed overnight. It just doesn't happen. Look, it's a disease. It comes on fast and it goes away when it's through with you. I don't know how. I don't know why. Nobody does. You mean to tell me in this giant building with all the books, all the brains, all the money, nobody knows? It's ridiculous. Well, I'm sure hell's a piece of cake compared to this. Well, this confirms the nerve conduction test. They are markedly delayed. There is evidence of denervation. Can you move it all, fingers, toes? No. I don't believe this. I was doing surgery 24 hours ago. And I am slipping fast. 
stays through now, Dr. Hanley? Yes, for now. Can I go? Yes. No. Dr. Gates, that was an official offer from the board. Yes, and that was my official response. Gates, everyone is upset about McIntyre's condition. And the board keeps pressing me to fill in his vacancy. Memorial already has a chief of surgery. Not for a while. Certainly not today or tomorrow or... Gates, McIntyre has recommended you to the board. Why don't you take the job? At least temporarily. No, not now. Trapper is coming back, Arnold. You might as well get used to the idea. Melanie. How'd you know it was me? <laughs> I know your walk, you know. I could hear the click of your heels in the hall. You know, I remember, I could always tell who was raiding the fridge at four in the morning. Kim had a little shuffle. And you always had a kind of a tiny bounce in the toes. And JT? <laughs> JT. Well, he usually dropped the fork on his way back up. <laughs> I, I came by earlier, but you were having some kind of test. Yeah, plasma for reasons. They, uh... Separate the plasma from the white blood cells. Try clean the blood. I'll pick it up tomorrow. Medium starch. <laughs> uh, how do you like this bed, kiddo? If you had one of these, we might have saved the marriage, huh? <laughs> oh, I forgot. For you. Oh, what do you got there? Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Pajamas. I guess they're kind of useless, but I couldn't think of anything else. Dr. Hanley talked to me. When he stabilized... If? When? You're out of danger. There's going to be a waiting period. Now it can be here or at home, but there will be wait. I say it should be at home. And you're going to need some help. Are you suggesting that uh, you should be my nursemaid? Come on, Melanie. You got a job? Graduate courses? Somebody's got to help you. I mean, you can't be alone. Look. Do you want somebody to help you or not? Melanie, I work in a hospital. If I need help, I certainly have it available to me. All these years, Trapper, it's so frustrating. Nothing ever changes, not even this. I don't need any help. Yes, you do need help. Everybody needs help once in a while. Even you. You're the one who's got him. Well, there's not much here. Yeah, well, there's not all that much about the Ganbare syndrome. Yeah. Sit down. Get to know the enemy. Dr. Riverside said his uh, spirits are holding up pretty good so far. Trap's a tough man. Dr. Jackson told me his, uh, pretty much totally quadriparetic. Haven't you seen him yet? Me? No, no, I, uh, <sighs> he didn't like those family things, you know? Some dopey kid blubbering or saying something stupid, both of which I'm very capable of. No, he, he, he doesn't need that right now. He needs everything that he can get. He's wondering if he's ever going to be a doctor again. He's wondering if he's going to live or die. He's probably scared out of his mind. 
don't you quit acting like a son, start acting like a doctor. Hey, back off, Gase. We're talking about my dad, not yours. My dad doesn't get sick or tired or hurt, never. You don't understand. Gonzo, how can he be paralyzed? I don't understand it. Take a look at this. Chapter 28. Listen, I... Chapter 17. He finally fell asleep. Do you mind if I watch him for a while? Oh, of course not. Gotta keep these fingers moving. That's what you told me when I fell off that bike. Cast and all. anything to help you out. But you knew that, didn't you? I'm sorry, Pop. I'm sorry. Let's try it again. I'm tired. I want to rest. 
John McIntyre, you've had enough rest. In fact, you've had too much rest. You must exercise the fingers. It's all I've been doing for the last five weeks. Then you do it again. You try and try until you do it, Doctor. You know, you were the best surgeon I worked for in Korea. You were the best at Memorial, and I am going to make you the best again. Don't push it, Ernie. Take me inside. Ah, uh, you better get Mike. Mike! Mike's gone to the market. Now, you can either wait on him, or you can trust me. Okay. Put your foot this way. No, let's do this real easy. Okay. Are you ready? Mm hmm Okay. Go. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Oh. Oh. Ah. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. <sighs> Sorry, Traffy, are you all right? We're going to stop meeting like this. <laughs> oh, help me up. Say, please. Melanie, what are you doing here? Ernie, when Dr. McIntyre and I were married, running the household was my job. Mrs. Shoup, I'm afraid I have to fire you. Whatever you say, Mrs. McIntyre. Come on, Ernie, where are you going? When we got married, darling, I promised you a lot of things through the good times and the bad. Molly, we're not married. That doesn't make the bad times any better, does it? This is one of them. First thing we're going to do is get reorganized. That bed goes out of here and into the den. I'm going to vacuum. I don't like having to step around you. Where do you want to go? Or do you want to lie there like that? Whatever makes you happy, sweetheart. Uh, give me a hand, will you? He's my son, too. I invited him for dinner. Come on, Melanie. It's, it's not a good night. He's concerned about you, Trapper. He wants to see you. I don't want him to see me like this. So I'll blindfold him. Hi, darling. Come on in. Hey, Ma. How are you? Mm. Good to see you. Hey, Bob. Hey, big guy. How you doing? Looking good. <laughs> right back at you. How you feeling? Well, not been a good day. How's things going with you? Great. Great. Oh, I got the old family album, huh? Look at that. Remember that camping trip to Sequoia? Look at Kimmy. What is she, about six there? Oh, ah. Uh, yeah, I meant to tell you. Kimmy... Now her mail finally caught up to her in Switzerland. She called the hospital today. Oh, no, wait a minute. We don't want to get her upset. Trapper, if she wants to cut her trip short... Well, no, no, don't make her cut the trip short. She doesn't have to come back here. Well, that's cool, that's cool. That's no problem, Dad. It's okay. This, that old station wagon we had going through the middle of that giant redwood. I think, Mom, you were driving. 
Yeah, Mom was driving. Remember she was afraid the car was going to get stuck? Gee, gee. I didn't make that trip. I, uh, I had to work. Oh. Almost forgot. I feel very privileged tonight. It's not often that a woman gets to have dinner with two doctors and not a beeper in sight. This calls for champagne. Would you do the honor? Sure, do it. <laughs> a trapper. Come on, Melanie. Let me contribute something. Right. Oops, let me get this out of the way. Here, good. Okay. Duck a la Raj in five minutes. Great. I don't know about you, but I feel guilty eating orange food. <laughs> you know, as long as this thing doesn't have any nuts and bolts, it's going to be okay. Uh, hey, Ma, you got a beer? Hey, come on, we're having champagne. Get the glasses, will you? Yeah, okay. Sure. that I'd show up in a family photo album more than five times. You were busy supporting the family. Yeah, supporting means being there. Should have been there when Kimmy lost her teeth. Should have been there to catch JT swiping the quarter you put under the pillow. Mm. Sometimes I think I was a father by proxy. I mean, you can't... should have tried this years ago. Now, you listen to me. You did what you felt had to be done. You loved your kids and your wife. And the only way you knew how. Oh, I don't know. Will you be still and listen to me for once? We had two beautiful children, you and I. We raised them into two beautiful adults. No guilt. No what-ifs or if-onlys. We did just fine. Better than most. I knew what I was getting into when I fell in love with you. I wasn't sorry then, and I'm not sorry now. Fit and rinse. Uh, no, I think you want the West Wing. Uh-huh. Uh, dial 9311. Ah. Uh, okay. Excuse me, is that precise? Oh, are you accurate? According to my watch, you are 37 seconds slow. Well, actually, I hadn't noticed. I... Oh, uh, can I help you? Oh, uh, no. Uh, you, uh, no, I'm... Uh, everything's fine. Just uh, quite fine. It's it, it just uh, 30... 37... Uh, I... Is that he? That is he. Who he? Dr. Quentin Mealy. The ferret. The guy from Chicago General? The thing. What's he doing here? Waiting to interview for acting chief of surgery. Look at him. He's early. Like they say he always is. The ferret is never late, never wrong, and never satisfied. Memorial beware. The ferret is here. Tell him Dr. John McIntyre is calling. Arnold, Melanie McIntyre. Trap would like to speak with you. Arnie? Yeah, I, uh, I would like for you to inform the board to, to start considering Dr. Gates as the new chief of surgery. No, no, I know. I'm not, I'm not talking temporary. I'm talking permanent. Yes, I'm sure. Thank you. Are you through? Yes. I don't believe it. What? You quit. Oh, come on, Melanie. It's true. You've actually given up. Get off my All back. these years, Trapper, I've loved you and I've hated you. I've been everything but disappointed in you. Until now.
He's giving us in-service training schedule for all doctors and nurses. Along with the continuing education courses. You got it. Except that these in-service classes are after regular hours and with no pay. Oh, terrific. What's up? Attention. The following seminars, films, and workshops are to be attended by medical personnel at their earliest convenience. Convenience. What is convenient about mandatory unpaid overtime? I'm not doing it. Well, think about it, Gloria. It says here, any staff member failing to complete all listed courses shall be subject to a reprimand. Reprimand? Hmm. What kind of reprimand? Fine, imprisonment, or both. <laughs> this is not funny, Ernie. I am not going to take a course called Perils of Plasma. <laughs> Well, there's a seminar I'm dying to attend. Antibodies, friend or foe. Hmm? And here's one for you, Ernie. Scrubbing the Pinkerton method. I read the book. Any good? I loved him, hated her. <laughs> come on, we gotta do something. Oh, relax, Gloria. Ferret just can't come in and drop a bomb like that. All he has to do is sit Gonzo on Arnold. He'll fix it. Oh, no, I'm afraid not, folks. This is signed by Acting Chief of Surgery, Dr. G. Alonzo Gay. Why, that son of a ferret. Pretty neat, huh? See, this is no ordinary wheelchair, Judd. I got you the best there is, the top of the line. Watch this. Here, watch, watch, watch. Here, let me get a running start here. Here we go. Watch this. Okay? Hey, you all right, suck? Okay, Mike. Sorry, John. Think Melanie heard that? Uh, she's upstairs in the shower. I'll tell her I did it. Well, she'll never believe that. I'm sorry. It's okay. How uh, how are things at work? Well, Gates is driving everybody crazy with that in-service training program of his. In-service training program? I mean, we're short of manpower, long on overwork. What does he think he's doing? Maybe you could talk to him. It's his job, not mine. Mm. Well, anyway, just want you to know, John, that I got you the best there is with this baby. It can go anywhere, it can do anything, and here is the best part, John. Guaranteed for life. I am so sorry. I, You know, on the way over here, I kept... Trying to think of what to do and what to say. I, I, I didn't want to goof up. You don't you didn't goof. Well, I don't want to do anything or say anything that's going to hurt our friendship. I mean, you and me and our friendship. It's... Well, you made it better, Stan. Believe me. <laughs> John's chair. What do we have to talk about? Right. You're in trouble, Gates. Big trouble. This in-service training program of yours, it is causing a mutiny. Yes. Yeah, and I told John all about it. He did. He hasn't called. What are you doing, Gates? I mean, what are you doing? Everybody thinks that you're just getting power hungry. Hmm. I'm warning, my friend. They are talking rebellion out there, and I think they mean it. Hmm. Hmm. I'm glad we see eye to eye. Are you up to something? You're up to something, aren't you? Uh-huh. See that? Huh? That's it. One small step for a child, one giant leap for John McIntyre. <laughs> what? The very first swipe did it. A bite of oatmeal. Oh, 
typical? Here I perform the greatest feat in my recent life, and you weren't even watching. What? Watch what? You want me to watch? I'll watch. I'm busy, but I'll watch. That sounded funny, didn't it? You saying watch me, and me saying I'm too busy. We've changed, haven't we? Mm-hmm. I think I was always too busy becoming the surgeon to accept what you were trying to give me. Too busy to need somebody. Not such a bad feeling, is it? I've had worse. Look, if it matters, I've changed too. I still give, I still need. I just don't need as much as I used to. Guess we're both starting from scratch. Hello? What are you doing? Writing thank you notes for all the cards and flowers you received. When do I sign them? <laughs> oh, you don't have to, darling. I've perfected a forgery of your signature. Pretty good. You don't do what I say, I'll forge you right into the poorhouse. Oh, 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 oh. Feeling our oats today, are we? Mm hmm. Celebrating? Happy anniversary to what? To giant steps. To all the good things that are happening. I'll drink to that. Me too. Now, Scoot, out. Out, I'm creating in my kitchen. McIntyre's Mobile! <laughs> for him to work with another therapist? Tomorrow, if you could, I'm packing. No. 
She won't be needing me anymore. Thanks. See, look. See? You can keep track of the uh, strikes and the balls with this little gadget. It's pretty nifty, isn't it? Special delivery for you, Stan. That John's, where did you get that? The guy in a truck just dropped it off. Wait, you only used that for, what, three weeks? Need help? Let him go. He's not fed a stare, but he's doing fine. John. Look at you, you're walking, you're standing. Barely, but it's a good sign. It sure is. Uh, mm. We'll come back. <laughs> um, may I? Oh, I insist. It's good to see you, Trap. Good to be seen. Uh, Gates is, uh... Yes, I know where he is. Uh-huh. Well, you look a lot better in that chair than I did. So, what's up? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is just what you wanted me to do, Doctor. Your in-service training program is over as of now. No more seminars, lectures, or films. Good. I was having a hard time coming up with them. 